Okay, so this is the prototype touchscreen. You can see we have the screen here in a wooden housing. See it from the side and from the front. Now on the back side to where we have the connections, we've got IEC, this is standard sort of Euro connector. And you have coming out of here, these holes are for the ventilation plates, which are here at the moment, they're not on at the moment. You see this this is the top one, goes on there. And this one at the bottom has a, a DVI connector inside. So that is um you connect that side to the screen inside of a cable and you can connect a cable from the outside which you can take to your computer. So at the moment I've just got the cable coming from inside with the adapter here straight into my MacBook and the screen you have this USB cable coming out here that is connected in this connector it's a little USB gender changer and type changer that I've made this sits in flush in this hole down here and uh, again this cable then goes straight to the controller for the touchscreen you can see in there the back of the screen I say these just these ventilation holes just top and bottom just to encourage some air flow in there so that's that is the unit itself you can see it's um, it's a 19 inch widescreen monitor it's nice and big and at the moment I've got it running off my MacBook as a uh, extended display but you could have it mirrored or anything you want really. So we have a look on the desktop here. You can see UPDD Calibrate and UPDD Console. I'm going to open up the console. Now you can, there's different options down the side here for the property so you can change stuff such as stabilization. We can go down to calibration. You can see here I've got it set on four points and a margin of 25%. The uh, number of points is the number of uh, crosses that it will put on the screen for calibration. And the margin is how far in from the edge it will uh, place the crosses. Uh, experimenting with it, I found that margin 25%, which is the highest it will go to, and number of points 4, is the most um, accurate I can get it. I've experimented with right to the edge of the screen and with higher points. And for some reason, the accuracy just seems to go really off towards the edges so I found that using four points is best so if we uh, click calibrate down here now it will open up calibration screen on here just click on these crosses and press confirm now you can see here um, this is the mouse moving around. Now you can, the first point you can notice there is the mouse isn't directly underneath me. That was a right click there. You can right click by pressing and holding. Now there it was much more accurate. But certainly towards the edge of the screen the accuracy can can come a little off so actually, I'm actually just going to recalibrate that just see if I can get it a little better There we go, that's, that's a bit better. So the, the main advantage of this screen really is because it's just a screen, it's, you know, it's just another computer monitor, you can put whatever you want on it. So, I mean, this I'm intending this for music use, so you can use it as a mixing desk or editing window. But, you know, you could use anything. If you're a photographer, you could use this for, you know, your light, Adobe Lightroom or Photoshop. So that's... Um, one of the main advantages of it. It's uh, it's quite intuitive being able to touch stuff. So, uh, but since I'm intending it for music use, really, if we open up, this is a project 
been working on called Firefly. Um, so we'll just have a quick mess around. You can see the main usage really. Um, this is the main arrange page in Logic. And we're just going to go ahead and press play here. Um, right now, you can see the song. I've got a few sections here, but it doesn't actually start till a bit later. So I'm just going to click on the timeline. Move the playhead along a bit. There we go. See if we can hear it. Yeah, I'm just playing it through the speakers, through my laptop at the moment, so it probably won't sound brilliant. You can see here I could move the playhead around, I can select different things. If I wanted to open up the mixer, click on that tab down there. You can see all my um, EQs. Open that up. And all my effects there. I'm just gonna just gonna pause the music so you can hear me. So this yeah, this is the mixer. You can see we've got EQs and plugins. All my compressors, lock compression sends, level faders. Just gonna, I can scroll up and down the mixer as well. Or of course, you can always open up a separate mixer. I do that with key command two on the keyboard. There we go. That we've got got a full mixer on there. I'll just start up the music again and uh, I'll move some faders around so you can see the mixing process. So there we go, I've taken, taken the overheads out there. I'm trying to bring the overheads back in. Now that may look as if it's lagging, but it's actually um, it's quite nice that way because it's basically extending the throw of the faders. These faders are only about five centimeters, maybe not even that. So obviously, if you were doing a really fine, when you get down there, if you find adjustments, it's nice being able to have that extra room because once you've latched onto the faders with your finger on there. You know, then wherever you move, you're still moving. I can move my finger over here. I'm still going to move them. So it, that's still um, that's pretty accurate, and that's it feels very nice on the fades. It's this discrete. The uh, surface of the screen is glass, so that's very smooth. Feels nice. Um, I'd say one of the main advantages is um, EQing. It's very intuitive. If I'm just if I'm just double click. Open up, or it's open up on my other screen over here. If I just quickly drag it across, yeah. Obviously, if you had this screen set up as your main monitor, then that EQ would open up straight on that page. So, if I'm to play again, You can see there that these EQs are really easy to move around. You know, you can select anything you want. I can change the gain on the side of it. If I just reset it here. So, for instance, if I was going for a mix, first thing I'd probably do on the other I'd put a low cut in. Just move it up a little bit. I wouldn't do it this far, but it's just to demonstrate. And then I'd experiment, see if there's some muddiness I can take out. If I want to change, I can change the Q factor there. Maybe boost a little there. Take out. Like I say, it's very, very intuitive for EQing. And that's probably the, one of the main advantages of using this system, is the ease of use of stuff like that.